Welcome to another episode of Behind the Picture. Oh my God, do we ever have an amazing one for you today. Today we are going into the studio and I'm going to show you some advanced lighting that I do with minimal equipment. It's actually gonna be pretty dope. My last lighting video shows you how to do two basic lighting setups with one light. Today we're gonna dive a little bit deeper and I'm gonna show you how to do a multiple light setup in this studio. This time we're using two and three lights with colored gels. So that's gonna be super dope. I'm gonna show you how I turn a white wall into a colored wall using gels only. And I'm gonna show you a couple of advanced gel placements that I use for like a little hit on the model's face. I haven't done a lighting video in a while, guys. And also, I don't light with gels often. It's like at times the project needs gels. At times it's like I have to light with gels. That's the, that's the thing that I need in order to take it to the next level. So today's shoot, it's going to be, I mean, today's um, podcast is going to be a little bit different. Also, it takes lots of hours for me to insert the photos that I'm taking into the videos. It takes hours for a five minute video. The first day I do the edit, the second day I insert the photos, it takes like eight hours. So I didn't insert these photos because there's like 300 photos or so. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip back and forth between the video. I'm going to be drawing diagrams for you. It's going to be super helpful. I'm definitely up for questions. If you guys have any questions for me while we're live, you can ask me any questions. And if you have questions, if you're watching this after the fact, just leave it in the comments. I see every single comment and I respond to absolutely every single one of them. So again, please keep in mind, um, today this is raw video pretty much. I mean, there's a couple of cuts. Jay's filming me. I'll be drawing diagrams on the screen as well as flipping back and forth to bridge to show you the images. And I'll be pointing out all the details that you guys should be noticing. I think that that's super key. What was great with this particular photo shoot is I had Jason Williams, my full-time assistant, and I had Julie in the studio for me with me. I'm trying to teach Julie how to be a digital tech as well as a better photographer in the studio. So watching Julie progress and hopefully she'll be able to submit some photos today so you'll be able to see the photos that Julie took. And later on, we'll be doing some photo critiques of viewer submitted images if there is any. So let's get into a lighting breakdown from my studio shoot on Friday. Let's get it on. So I'm shooting at Ge Geary Studios, which is in Toronto. It's a uh, digital tech missing crucial information. Okay. I'm an, I absolutely right. love this Take spot. This 3,000 square foot studio. Okay, is, Wyatt, just stay on that mark. Good. I'm going to just... Yeah, there it is. Quickly stop this. Sorry, here. there's no Oops. music. Quickly stop this here. And I want you to see the, the setup. Just a touch. Good, 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 good. That's it, that's it. I want you to see the setup back here. First of all, I have, um, this is negative fill. This is negative fill. So what this is doing is it's stopping light from bouncing back on that side. You can see that I have a light stand and a light behind that's putting this red color behind him. You can't see in this shot what's happening in the front, but I'm gonna let it play out. Yeah, that's closer. Let's get into a bit of a pose. Good, good, stay there. Good, good. Yeah, there's something there with that light for sure. Okay, I'm gonna stop there and show you these first frames so you get a sense, okay? What's happening is I have a two light setup happening in the rear and one light in the front. You can see one light is kicking this highlight here and making the whole background red. And then another light is doing this circle here. Both of them have grids. This rear light 
has a grid. This light has a grid, which is focusing it into like a circle, as you can see. And then in front, I have another light that's lighting him here with a blue gel in front. You're going to see it in a second. But the exposure on this shot is low. The exposure here is closer on his skin. But you can see how bright the background is. This is definitely too bright as far as the color that I'm trying to get. This is too much and I'm not getting enough saturation here. So watch how I build through this. You can see here I'm building through the light that as far as his skin and his face. This is very close to what I'm looking for, but what's happening in the background is not. And then here, this is the first frame where now I drop the backlight. You can see now there's no light back here. I still have the light here, which now the saturation back here is better. And you can still see this little hint of blue. So rather than using two lights, I mean, rather than using three lights, I decided to use two. For sure. Um, that's just white light, right? Turn that off, Julie, now for me. Thank you. Stay there. Oh, fuck yeah. That's it. That's it. You're gonna like this. Okay, head this way just a bit. So you can see, you can see my reaction when I actually am hitting it. You can see my reaction 100% where it's like, yes, this is now it. These first frames, especially with a light that's this complicated, and this is something that I want you to watch throughout the whole shoot, I'm continually correcting him back into the light because the nuance and the spot that he has to be, and I'm also continually correcting where the gel is placed on his face. Yeah, more, head that way more. Yeah, good, hands in the back pockets. Lean that way more. Good, 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 good. Pushing this like this bit of color. I'm just trying to place it properly. Like it's, I'm trying to get it to like yeah. be a really nice line. So that at this point, I'm showing off, him these frames. Like I'm showing him these know, frames. James, I feel like the, um, the whole showing light, teaching light, all of this, I, I feel like I need to set up a workshop sort of a scenario and do it. I find it hard to film it. I'm just, I'm so liquid with the way that I light, you know? I don't know, funny hard, 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 hard. So, Hey, <laughs> Julie, I'm, I mean, I'm so proud of no, this girl. She, uh, <laughs> she figured out you. so much shit on this day. Again, you got to learn this shit, man. Sorry. You got to learn this like. shit. I like that. Looking down like that again. Okay. So that shot right oh. there, that shot right there with this head angle, I want you to see how how over here, his head angle's not right. And you can see this because of this no shadow. He moves his head a lot. Here is where, yes, but I also need his face to go, I also need his face to go this way because I love this nuance that's happening on his face and this hint of blue, like it's a really, really great vibe, but it's not, it's still not there yet. And you can see I'm working through this. Here, the no shadow, wrong. Now the saturation in the background's right. This, same thing with the no shadow, cause his head is too up, his head is too up. But this is now where I'm starting to get the meat and potatoes. Well, that's fucking everything right now. Also, I want you to notice the low angle that I'm using. The reason that I'm using a low angle at times is because I want him to feel powerful. So I'm aiming 
up at him because I want him to feel lofted. There's also, I'm not using a seamless. A seamless would come down here and cover this seam and make the floor white. I'm just shooting to a white wall. So because of that, this breaks up the background and I want my frames to be cropped. So you can see I'm going at a low angle in order to make sure that I'm lofting him and also cutting dope, out that it's line. Dope, dope. You're out of the light, come in just a bit. Yeah, there, there. Make sure that that front white light's touching you, okay? Good, hands in the pockets, maybe the back pockets. And this guy touched his face a lot. You guys know how I feel about people touching their face. I had to stop this guy from touching his face a lot. Lean this way more. Yeah. Oh, it's sick. Change the pose up. Jay filmed this yeah, so forward. well. Just a touch. Yeah, good, 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 good. I'm shooting Wait, 50 you, millimeter. You something with this arm, like on the head. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. I, I think I want to get the blue. Oh, that's dope. That's it. Say it just like that. And also, Stay no there, music, so I could play this. Touch. Right. right now, you see this no shadow. You can actually see this in the light. You see this little highlight here and this little highlight here on his lips. I need his head to come down like just a touch, but you can see this beautiful Rembrandt light that's happening here. Just this little hint of blue that's happening here and on his arm. It's, um, it's so dope. And I'll show you, we ended up getting into that, um, right in and around, like you can see there with the arm up. He turns his face forward. This is the frame that I'm showing you. That's just what I shot. Now, the next thing, I want you to notice how black these shadows are. It's because here I'm using negative fill and that's stopping any light from back bouncing back at him and it's giving me really black shadows. Um, but this no shadow has to come down. Like he has to drop his chin. So you can see I drop his chin a touch and then I drop his chin a touch more. And now that's kind of the shot where I have that perfect light. And you can see that hint of blue gel on his arm, which I think is absolutely everything. I keep missing my window. There, you see that no shadow? Drop your chin just a touch. Right there, look at that light, don't move. Don't move, don't move. Like that's the thing when you're shooting in the studio, you actually have to watch the modeling light because you can see the modeling light doesn't give you a lot of light. Like it's really nuanced and you really have to check your frames. I think that that's something that Julie and Jay learned on this shoot, like just how I'm constantly correcting the model back into the light. I want you guys to watch Inch that yourself today. this way, but keep in the same pose. Just move your body that way on the background. Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it. Good. Oh, that's sick. Drop that arm now. Dope, dope. Dope. You can see as soon as he moves his head that way, you can see how it completely, it completely changed um, the sensibility. Inch yourself this way, but keep in the same pose. Just move your body that way on the background. Like the light on yeah, his face it, is it, so perfect it. there. Good. But he moves his head and oh, it changes. Sick. Drop that arm now. Dope. 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 There, and yeah, it totally changes. Yeah, I mean, pretty sick stuff still. Yeah, so right now I'm showing him. Like that blue this on the This is the shot is where now we lose his head angle. And this splash of light back here. Mm -hmm. Super dope. And now I'm about to punch in and shoot some close-ups. I hope that you guys are finding this helpful. Yeah, like, I wanted to do something dope. a little different today. That's dope. That's what we're trying to do. Looks dope, eh? Very different. So eh? this is um this is what I'm showing. Just this. Very different from like my style even. This is really strong. Look at that. Yeah, I'd like to. Oops, I'd like to shoot that as a portrait. I think. Can I? I just need my. Uh, come back. Come. Yeah, I switched right to the 100. Good. 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 Oh, that's sick. Good. I switched to the 100. Now this is what I want you to watch up here. I'm, this is, <laughs> look at this gel up here. That gel is what I'm using. It's roughly four feet 
from him. I, it's kind of in between the light and him because the closer that I go to him, the more saturated it's going to put that color on him. So I'm dancing this gel in and out. I have this gel on a boom arm and it's clamped like this on the top so I can have the stand out of my frame and it's out of the video frame right now as well. But um, good. That's how I'm getting I this hint a, of blue. That's how I'm getting this um, amazing hint of blue here. And now you can see I went into some close-ups. And you can see how black that side. I'm just putting that hint on his ear. And this is the stuff that I'm shooting. You can see the difference here with the head down and the head up, how that no shadow just is not what I'm looking for. You can also see I'm lighting him quite radically from the top, right? I'm lighting him really quite hard down. You can see I'm actually losing this eye and half cutting this eye, but I actually like it. Like it looks very manly. His clothing, because his clothing is in shadow, it's also going almost to black. I'm doing like an Abaddon kind of a light, but with color. A bit of kickback. Yeah, so that's exactly what I'm noticing so right now. Mm -hmm. It's actually, it's kind of meta, but I... So watch what I do. I turn the negative fill into... I'm going to take advantage of a little bit of a kick. Into a, a reflector. And this is why V-flats are so important. This V-flat is white on one side and black on the other. And now I'm using this and I'm gonna angle this this way. And I'm using this to mirror the light that's coming this way. And it's gonna fill in on the negative side, but not change anything else. You see what I'm doing? I'm trying to mirror that, Jay? I'm trying to mirror that light with And that this. gives you a good sense as to what's happening in the background with that reflector. I mean, with that light. And kick this back at him. Right now, before I was using uh, like something that was basically eating shadow, which did look amazing. Now we're gonna kick back a little. It's great. Wow, face this way for me a bit. Good. So it's really important for you to see now what that looks like. Obviously, the difference between the black, which is what this is, it's a very, very negative fill. And you'll see the first image now with the white, which is this. Let me get this arm down. Where is that first light image? This is all like, I love this work. There it is. Look at the difference between negative fill and reflector. Now we have this insane red on this face and the detail of his beard. His shirt all just came back. The difference between his face here and his face here it's the same light, but it's just way more nuanced. And also you can see this gel, this kick of blue gel on his face, I think is really strong. Do let me know what you guys think of this photography. I am uh, hanging it all out there and showing you all my tricks and tips. Use the other arm, use your other arm. Bring your face back this way. Good there, stay there. Good there. I also noticed um, Jay has to clean his sensor. He has sensor dust right here that doesn't move. Um, hit your sensor with a little bit of uh, compressed air, Jay. Hands both in the pockets. Bring your face back this way. Good. Good, bring your head back that way, that way, that way. Yeah, right there, stop, stop, stop. Dope. Yeah, look at that light. You can just even see it from you can even see it just looking this way. And I think it's really, really strong. You can see here, this is the photography that I'm working through. The horizontal is so dope. 
and then him looking now towards that light. Just this nuance now on this side of the face, although he's he's physically out of the light here. I have to move him into it. You can see the difference where he's out of the light and he's in the light there. But this is getting very close to a photograph that I would use. This here. Again, he touches his face way too much. Oh, secret. You're not supposed to see that one yet. Oh, that's dope. You got to inch this way now. Take this, Juju. Do let me know if this is helpful, guys. Leave comments if this is helpful. So I'm kicking the bounce back just a little bit closer to him. I want it to be even more kick. I'm moving the red light in the background in to him more. All right, we'll try this. Thank you can you. see I moved the backlight it's in, eh? His eyes are which is back here blue. more. It's dope. Just like that. Just like that. Wow. Take your hand down, but keep your head at the same angle. Keep your head at the same angle like it was down. Yeah, yeah. Just like, like that. Like you see how important it just is like to that. correct. Constantly correcting him. Yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah, that's good, that's good, that's good. Your head angle's great there, great there, great there. Yeah, and this photography, this photography is all this stuff that I'm shooting in here. And the nuance is, like, this is everything. And the difference from just kicking in this white reflector on this side versus the black reflector is is really i think the difference is is really noticeable the negative fill and how it just eats that shadow side versus what we're doing now which is this and how that reflector just kicks this light back so 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 beautifully and this model is really great as far as his posing. Like, he's really got a great sensibility. I had a good time shooting this guy. This is the second time I've photographed him. Okay. Um, I'm going to shoot him. I'm going to shoot him three ways. And then I am going to allow. Oh, dude, this is really good. You want to see this? Huh? Is that the second last one? I saw it pop up on the screen before I left. Yeah. So, that also, probably... I want you to notice how I show him the photographs. I only show him photographs when it's when it's relevant for who, for him to know how he looks and what he's doing. I don't sh like shoot and show and shoot and show. It's very much like I'm just crafting a photo, and I want you to know this is this is making pictures this isn't taking pictures this is we're trying and i'm trying to do something that's so specific and so different for the type of photography that i usually do um i really just wanted to push it, it and was also probably that one yeah. or that one. i've owed you guys another lighting video so one? this is it but it's super dope yeah it's cool. the light's really strong that like little hint back there it's mm -hmm. super nice I'd like to do like a little bit more experimental with this gel, um, but it's all about your placement. I need you to just jump back on this on your spot, back up just a bit, move this way just a bit, keep going. Yeah, I think you're too close. You got to back up just a bit. Yeah, that's it. Come back just a bit. You can see I'm just putting this light on his face perfectly, perfectly, perfectly. Move this way. Now you're closer. Now you're closer. Oh yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. I want you to do something where you're now looking like fo focusing that way. Like turn that way more, even with your face. That's great. Great. Can you turn even totally profile that way? Yeah, exactly. Like focus like you're looking towards this. Yeah, good, good, good. Stay there. Stay there.
That's great. Again, this is oh, that's so sick. This is such a different feeling when turn you're your seeing. Turn your body to me, but turn your head that sideways, like that more sideways even. Yeah, great. See like that. Hands in the front pockets. Look towards me. I want you guys to also notice I control everything. I control everything, every pose, every way that he, he is. Do you notice there's no point where I let him do what he wants to do? It's, it's never, when you're photographing in the studio, you have to direct. And I direct like nobody's business. Yeah, yeah, good, good, good. Good, come towards into the light just a touch. Yeah, there you go, good. Oh, that's crazy, a bit more towards me. See where that light is. Yeah, I think you're out of it. Move this way. Yeah, and back. There it is. Now move this way. Good, 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 good. Yeah, that's closer. Dope, dope, dope. Inch this way just a bit. Come towards me. Right about there. That's a great shot for you to see the distance now of the flash. You can see the boom arm, you see the distance here and the distance here. And also how his placement, and he keeps moving this way and this way and backwards and forwards. I have an X on the floor. I'm telling him exactly where to stand, but he's still rocking. So I have to continually correct him. Okay. Also notice that I'm using undiffused lights. This one has a grid and it's basically giving really hard shadows. Okay. That, um, this light in the rear is off. Try something totally That's off different. in the back, by the Take way. That this. light is off. There's something there, bro. There is something there. Okay, um, can you jump into the black? The all black for me? Okay. We did a quick change. I did a quick edit there so you guys didn't see it. But you see now back here is blue. It used to be red. Everything else is the same. Where the blue gel before was, meaning on the boom arm, now the red gel is. So I'm now, I've flipped it. He's changed outfits and we're trying to do something. Okay, that's let's just see a what this different. looks like. Yeah, move this way just a touch, yeah. And you can see he's being lit by red, mostly. And I'm trying to get him not all red-faced, I'm trying to get him just lit a touch with the red. And this is the light that you're seeing on my thumbnail. Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. I'm gonna need a 50, Julie, can you get it? Dope. Oh, wow, bro. Are you he's, seeing that? <laughs> even Jay said, oh, wow. So that's the first frame. And that first frame is now right here. And you can see how lovely the blue is to look at. It's just so pretty. This little hint of red on his skin and on his arm, this is the first frame. So I haven't exactly nailed it yet, but look at this blue highlight on his skin. Look at this negative side of his face. It just, and also his clothes are nondescript. So, because his clothes are nondescript, it's like you can't, it's not about his clothing, it's about him. You're asking me what settings that I shot it at. Um, <clears throat> you know, there's, n if I tell you the settings, there's no way that A, you're gonna be able to imitate it, or B, that it really helps. But I'm gonna explain to you that it's all about ratios and um, a light meter. Number one, you need a light meter. So of course I have a meter. The light that's in here in the front I sh is F5. So I shot the light on his face at F5. But this light coming in here, and there's also this light back here, 
these two lights, I didn't physically read them. I did it all visually. If this background highlight was too bright, I turned down the power. If the red was too hot, I turned down the power if it wasn't showing enough. The funny thing is when you're lighting with gelled lights, it's not the same as when you're putting highlights on, on models where you have to have the light brighter. With gels, it's almost like the lower the power, the more saturated the color is. So you have to really tweak it. So my settings, I shot ISO 100 F, um, five at 125. Now, does that help you? No, because you could go into the studio and try to do this and put your camera at those settings and it's not at all close because flash power, ratios, distance, all of this stuff matters. You can't light in the studio without a light meter, period. You can't do it. You're just pissing in the wind and spending way more time doing what you should be able to do in a second, which is achieve normal. Once you know normal, which is what you set your camera at, plus you're shooting with flash. So the 125 to a 200th of a second shutter speed is fixed. You're shooting at the lowest ISO possible. So 100, that's fixed. You're shooting at 125 to 200 shutter speed, that's fixed. So the only thing that changes is your f-stop. And that all depends on the power of the flash, the distance and the placement. So me telling you my settings in studio means nothing. Telling someone camera settings anytime means nothing because it's specific to the condition, specific to the camera, time of day, photographer, position, blah, blah, blah. You asking a photographer what his settings are and you're gonna go apply them, it, it just, yeah. And by the way, manual. This is the only time I shoot manuals when I'm shooting in studio because I'm manually taking a light meter reading and taking the input that the flash is hitting on my flash meter and I'm inputting it into my camera. So let's get back to the video. I like that. You got to stay a little bit in the white light. Come just, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Dope. Hands in the back pockets. Dope. Come towards me a touch. Yeah, dope, 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 dope. Dope. Oh, fuck yeah, look at that. The, um, you have the 50? So this is now what I'm shooting? Look, it went to F0. Mm -hmm. And it also Oops. knows right. what lens you're putting on. And now it's, goes right back to F5, which is what I was shooting. So, so this is a two light drop setup. Drop your chin a touch. Drop your chin. Yeah, right there. Turn your face this way from me. Right there. Oh, that's everything right there. Dope, dope, dope. I know that. Um, oh, I like that a lot. It's a nice contrast to the other picture. So, just what I'm showing him at the moment is just going through again these frames. I'm trying to find that sweet spot of light here. You can see what his eyes look like. Like, his eyes are so blue. And also this hint of red is hitting him too much. So I'm trying to find that sweet spot, but I really do have to shoot through it, right? You can see this has less red on his face and it's on his arm. This has more red on his face and his, com his arm is completely covered, but you really do have to shoot through the picture and I'm really trying to get that perfect, that perfect nuance and an alternate picture to the last one. You know, with the blue? Yeah. It's great light, same light, but just different um, colors. Mm -hmm. Super dope. Very cool. Yeah, super dope.
All right, I want more red. Move this way just a touch. Just a bit more. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's great. Stay there for me, Wyatt. Oh, that's it. Head this way now. Good. Bring your face back to me a bit. Right there. Good, good, good. Don't move. Don't Look move. Look at don't that move. light. You can even, you can see it right here. Like, you can see how perfect this light is right here. Let me just find where I started to nail that. I think that's this right in here. And you can see just how strong this is. You know, the light looks really right. I like the fact that I'm not seeing this eye. It's just super strong. And again, these pictures are unretouched. They're pretty much just straight at a camera. Right there. That's great. Oh, I like that a lot. Can you do one looking for me this way, like a total profile that way? Yeah, that's it. Look down for me a bit more, look down. Yeah, eyes down like you're looking at the ground. Yeah, that's it, that's it. Put your hands in your front pockets. Can you move? Again, I total control. I don't allow him to do anything on his own. You can see once he turns sideways, the light's hitting him quite flat and I'm not necessarily loving it. Yes, he has some under light. Yes, the rear side of his face isn't lit, but it's okay, but it's not everything. Move that, keep, stay profile, but just move that. Yeah, too much. Come back to me just a touch. Come back to me just a bit more. Yeah, good, 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 good. Just trying to match that just a little bit back. That red is like right, that's it, it's right on you. Shooting with the 50 millimeter. Look back towards me. And then you can turn back towards me. Yeah, I, I, oh, I wasn't yeah, that's feeling it. That's it. it, right where you were, that, just lean that way, that way. Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it. Oh, that's sick, sick, don't move, don't move. What is that, the 50? That's it, don't move, Wyatt. That's great. Yeah, this, this is from here now shooting through this. And you can see like, I'm not feeling it. I, I'm trying different angles to get this picture and there's nothing here. When he looks at me, the no shadow, like this is just horrible. So I'm hating that. And then I just abandon ship and have him turn back to me. And you can see this is where it starts to rock. Um, I low angle it. And then here, I think, is where I want to see it on camera, on screen. That's pretty sick still. Fuck, bro. Fuck, bro. That's dope. That's dope. Wow. Wow. Look at this red, bro. Look at this red on his neck. It's so like nuanced. Yeah, and then there's the thumbnail from today. Like again, I shooting through this picture and you can see how now, now I'm really starting to hit. You can see here, this is now starting to hit the vastness of this background, the double page spread. And this again, all of this is starting to hit. Um, I compliment him. He gives me a little bit of that smile and I shoot through here again, another banger. You can see up here my stand. Um, but yeah, shooting through this and then I want to show that I'll stop there because then I change axis. I change axis. It's really hard to get on, on screen, but I'll, I'll show you. Uh, obviously, I'll insert that. Follow me this way with your face. No, watch. I'm Follow changing axis. Good. I'm changing right my there. axis. I'm moving this way. Oh, that's epic. And Stop you can right see, there. I see this light in the background. Like this, this now is everything. This now is everything. Cause now I change my axis 
and I move, I move this way. And because I'm moving this way, now I'm starting to see a hint of this in the background. And look at this, look at the light on him and having that hint back here, I just think is everything. So now I shoot through this and look at how misty, smoky it kind of looks back here, like giving you a little bit of seeing behind the fifth wall. I kind of like it. Do let me know what you guys think about this. And again, a bit of a low angle, really, really feeling this. So yeah, it's just a bit of a different vibe going off that front axis. So let me just show you that process. Great. Come towards me just a touch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah, good. Yeah, there. you Look can see way, all of that, more. right? Right there. Don't move. Bro, that's so cinematic. Fuck. I need that shot again. Different with your arms, even if your like arms are above your head, like you're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look that way though still. That's it, that's it, that's it. Oh, that's epic. Move this way just a touch. I want you to see up here that the light is just half hitting this. It's not fully shining through here. I'm I'm aiming the light so it's only partially hitting this grid. This is why I have it on this boom arm. Good, 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 good. You see how I'm rotating now? I want you to see what's happening on the screen. Now I'm on front light. Yeah, that's another thing is because I'm rotating, now this light, this is my main light. This light now is hitting him from the front. So you can see I'm molding his cheeks here, here, and you can see this under no shadow in the ridges here. Cause because I'm rotating off that front axis, now I'm essentially doing front light and I have this light in the background. So it's, I'm just kind of rotating off the axis. I'm kind of breaking because the rule. Because of where I am. And look at what's happening over there. How crazy that is, right? I went from, because now the light's in front of me. So I just rotated around. Can you put both your arms up there like that? Good. Good. Yeah, I just want to um, take a second to show you guys this. And once I rotate around, yeah, it's here. So now I'm rotating around and you can see his face. Oops, this really great cinematic. He's getting hit by the red. Arms up. He's getting hit too much with the red here for my liking. But I'm just so excited because the vibe is so nice. Like this is just such a great energy. Um, color gels, the, the toughest, the question is from Mez. He's asked me, what's the toughest um, encounter that I've had with color gels? Is they melt. They melt. The modeling light melts them. Um, also, keeping them on the head. I mean, these are strobes, right? So the strobe lights flash. So when they flash, like, it, essentially it generates no heat, but the modeling light itself generates heat so because the modeling light generates heat the modeling light is what we're using to actually see the color with our eyes before we shoot the shot so because of that the biggest challenge is is they melt and if you see any gel in any photographer's kit they're all like warped and melted from the modeling light so that's the first thing and then the next thing is like Sometimes some people's modeling lights, they run really hot and the gels can like melt to the light. Like it gets really messy sometimes and has the potential to get that way with lights. And my last set of lights got really hot. So I couldn't really light with gels. So I just did not But when I switched to Ellen Chromes, it started becoming easier for me to light with gels. And I started messing around with them maybe 10 years ago. So like I'm 10 years in lighting with gels so i don't do it often twice three times a year but 
I enjoy it. So it's a nice add to my work. And it also shows clients just a different angle. Um, let's get back into the video. Stay just like that. Stay just like that. Don't move. Don't move. Now I'm turn your head to me just a touch. Keep it on that angle. Yeah, good. Bring it, rotate it this way. More. Stop. Drop your chin now. Right there. Come back to me. Right there. That's it. Don't move that. Don't move that. Stay right there. Don't move. That's dope. Dope. Look back at me. Like, I hope that you guys are also oh, seeing the sick. poses that I'm seeing. Come on. That's fucking sick. I hope you guys are seeing the poses that I'm seeing. And again, just going through here to the point where his arms are up, which is, I guess I'm shooting this stuff right here. Right now, I think that's the stuff that I'm shooting. Or it actually, I think it could be this stuff. I think I went through that and into this now. Yeah, I rotated. Again, I'm just really trying to see something unique. Look at what's happening in the light here with his eye. This little hint of red down here. I really feel like this is something special. I like this a lot. So again, it's like I'm running out of gas on this look. I'm just about to dead it. Like I can feel it um, energetic wise. I can so feel it. So different. It's so different. You can come check it closer, Wyatt. Oops, sorry. It's just so different from me. Like, look at this. It looks like the light is emoting from you, like mm -hmm. you're the source. It's coming out of here and That's there, cool. like angel wings, bro. That's you know what cool. I mean? Like yeah. it splashes out that way. That's so sick. And the nuance of the light on that eye, that's why I'm being so like, no, this way, this way, this way. I'm trying to get like that's that cool. nuance. And um, bro, look at this, guys. Yeah, Come that... over here, Juju. Look at this. Mm -hmm. So again, like this, I'm, sharing, um, I'm sharing with Julie and the crew just these last frames and this energy here um again really excited about it it's just something different for me i really enjoyed going through and shooting this process it's no shadow you see how it doesn't match i have one more so look I needed to, you to turn your share face with you guys. that way a bit and then here that's where we got it oh, cool. like you can see the difference like yeah. that that no shadow just isn't flattering ever so i'm always trying to that's just so sick. This, this is mm -hmm. sick. Really sick. And it looks like album art. That's so, like mm -hmm. on some weekend shit, which yeah. is really great. Like that's dope. So I I that's only dope. I only share the photos like sometimes and then this kind of vastness on and the i wall. show them at the end and i like i get him into the place i shoot yeah, through it and then i share time. yeah man i don't mind it's dope it's dope for me i'm like i all i want now is a f really close portrait which is what i'm missing and then i'm gonna pass you off to the jedis and let you shoot with them for an hour or so because Julie and Jay really need uh, some practice and it's gonna give you like more light, more outfits. Um, all right, what do I wanna imitate the most? Yeah, I think I'm, I wanna get back into, give me this So, so I shoot this last um, bit. So there's some people that I can link you to. Yeah, man. He doesn't have an agent, so oh, I'm trying to help this guy get an Wyatt. agent. This is a really sick picture. Inch to me like a fucking millimeter towards me. Yeah. Move your face this way. Yeah, good. Too much, Wyatt. Come back, come back, come back. Right there, right there. Hands in your back pockets. Yeah, that's Dope. everything. Yeah, this picture is, um, is everything. And I start to get into this 
with the hands in the back pockets, like right here. And this is another picture that I chose as a final. I'm like really, really liking this photo. Um, this picture here, him in his back pockets, like he looks super rugged. Look at the detail in this photo. He looks super rugged. He's got super long eyebrows, which is pretty funny. And the last time I shot him, he didn't have a beard. So it's a bit of a change for me. But I really like this photo. I like how his arms like taper him into his body. His clothing is nondescript. So you really just zoom in on his face. I think that this is super, super effective. And again, just the shots that I was shooting leading into this. Um, this is the last little bit of a run. You can see the difference for when he's out of the red a little bit and into the red a little bit more. I don't know. I was really feeling this stuff. Some of my favorite shots from the day were in this look right here. You know, still like that really nice hint of blue on that side. Square up. Turn your body to me. Yeah, turn your face back to me. Right there. Right there. Good, 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 good. Good. Oh, dude, this is just, come on. New work. Like, your outfit's invisible, bro. It's just your face. Yeah, that's cool. You know what I mean? It's just your face. It looks so fucking Italian. You know what I mean? It's got that, like, Paolo Reversi sort of, like, Italian Vogue feeling, men's Vogue kind of Vogue kind of a vibe, you know? I mean, again, it's just, it's so, it's such a departure from people, what people expect from my work, but I, again, I can shoot in so many different styles. Look at this one. I can shoot in so many different styles. Yeah, but I was really happy I, with this. So I think there's one last yeah, quick look and, we're gonna show you. One last quick look, um, he changes into this. On, let me shoot a picture without it, so you can see what I'm gonna do, okay? I, I, this now gets into three so, lights, again, which is you super see effective. How he's stand back up just a touch, Wyatt. You got it, you got it. And then turn, come towards me, Julie, so you can see it straight on. So you can see his face, right? You can see where the light's coming from. You can see that little pocket of light there. Inch forward just a touch. Turn your face this way just a touch. You can see now that nose triangle and where that nose mm -hmm. triangle's going. Drop your chin just a touch. See now that shadow just disappeared and now that's perfect. So yeah, this is what this Rembrandt lighting, you can see that's what we're doing right here is this little pocket of light. Um, that's what I'm, I'm showing Julie how to find it. These directions, like you have to give him. Now watch, now that I have that light, perfect. Um, I turned my camera off, how, how, what a tragedy. Um, don't worry, focus on him. So now that, um, this takes a second, then look at this. Now we're looking at the clothing and already I've lit him in such a way to make it so his clothes disappear. So you can see this. I want to share with you this first frame because, because I put on now a second light after this, I want to show you this first frame. And this is what the first frame looked like with that jacket. It's just, and again, getting his head into the right angle. This is the exact same light that I did here with no variations, no variations at all. So let's show you now where I take this. The jacket now, there's just like a splash mm -hmm. of, a D, of Levi's because it's a Levi's jacket but I want just a little bit more separation, but everything else is really nice. So what we're gonna do, watch this, don't move too far. We're gonna shoot this. So what we're gonna do, Julie, come over here, is watch. I want to kick light in. So now I'm kicking, you see here, I'm kicking light in on him, but so it's this like is now you don't want it to light. come flat. You want it to kind of go down. So I'm going to anchor this down. I'm going to sky this and just bring it in a little closer. Now you see this, right? You see this light on him. So yeah, so now I'm just, I want there to be more light here on this shoulder and in this jacket. 
So I bring in a third light. This is a two light setup. And when I go to this third I'm light. splashing him and I'm hitting him like it's giving just a little this bit of detail. Looks so incredible. Wait till you see this the final. next place that I'm gonna put it, if I don't like it here, is I'm gonna put it here and just hit him like there. So I'm gonna try this first. I don't think I'm gonna like this. I think I'm gonna like the first one, the, the second idea better. I didn't think I was gonna like you this, could, wow. but you I did. You can see the difference. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, this I liked so much that I didn't change the light at all. Look at the difference. Just this little nuance between this photograph and this photograph and what that light over the shoulder does. Look at the detail on the fabric now. Look at this logo. Look at the stitch with just that little bit of light over his shoulder. It's not the right frame, but that's just the test shot. I lost my marbles. Like, look at that, right? It does. Good, not great, right? Dope. 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 Like it's so now I've shot five more frames and it's this, 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 and you can see now this is everything. And this are the five frames that I shot. Actually kind of good, you know what I mean? Like that light and this, like that nuance is just, that looks like an ad, like 100%. Dope. Move into the red just a little bit for me now. Move into the red a bit more for me. Yeah, good. Good. Move just a bit more this way. Come up just a bit. I can't, how come I can't see it on you? Back up, back up, back up. Move this way, this way, this way. There it is. Come. That's it. Do it again. There it is. Move this way more. I'll show you this in a sec. Go. Oh, that's so sick. Look that way now. Hard that way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good. Good. That's kind of dope still. Back here. Yeah, yeah, good, 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 good. Yeah, I mean, all of this is kind of dope. Okay, back this way. Good, 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 good. Good, 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 good. good. I can't wait for you guys to see this. Good. Can't wait to show you this. Oh, dude, come on. This is like ads now. I this can't wait like to show you this. For Levi's. Stop. I want you guys to see how I layered this. Zip that up for me. I want you guys to see how I layered this shot and built this light. Look, turn your face this way now. Yeah, good. Radically look that way. Good. Yeah, put both hands in the pockets. Bring your face back to me now. Yeah, good, more to me, more, more, more. Right there, stop, right there. Yeah, I'm done. That's killer. <laughs> Come look at this, bro. Look at yeah, that I'm shot. Done. That's like an ad for your Levi's jacket. That's cool. Like, look at that, like that. All right, so blue, like yeah. just pushing through like that, that little hint of red, mm -hmm. the light on your face, that little shadow. So just how this, transpired just showing you now how I built through this shot you can see how ju it just looked cool I think and the energy him moving into the red we get into just in a second you can see just a hint of red coming in here and again it's just it's just different for me but I really like how this shoot developed. You can see him here really in the red and it's just, it's just different, you know? It looks very magazine editorial. That's kind of the goal. This is just another really cool shot. Cool shot. His elbow was out of the frame. Yeah, I, again, it's just how I, I, we, this is how I ended it and it just ended up being a really cool session this is him zipping up his jacket zipping up his jacket 
and you can see because I'm using the grids, it like it fades out as far as light. Like his face is lit, but his body isn't. It just really ends up feeling cool. I use grids so often and that's the one thing I think that I do with my lighting that just makes it really nuanced. Now that he's looking this way, because he's looking, because he has his face rotated this way, now the light that's coming over here ends up giving that beautiful highlight and I'm shooting him into here, which we see the red and then we have the shadow. It's just like, I don't know, I think um, cool and nuanced and unique this is another, this would be a final. You can see I really have like the right light punching in on his back eye there, which I really like. That's another like really strong one. And yeah, it's just, and we're back at the center. This is the shot that I ended on. I'm really happy. Do let me know guys, if you found this breakdown helpful, like I, I haven't done a video like this before, but I wanted to do something different. I wanted to share with you how I shot this. I wanted to share with you everything about the back end of it, just because I think that it's so helpful and so necessary. I hope you guys agree. Again, it's just, it's one of those things that, it's one of those things where I feel like, uh, <laughs> There's no other way for me to really give you guys a way that I shoot without really showing you, you know, I want you guys to pull, I want you to pull a couple of things out of this exercise. The first thing that I want you to pull is the way that I direct. Um, I want you to notice like it's it doesn't it's not oh you look great blah 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 fantastic blah blah no make love to the cat like all this not like it's so nuanced like head down turn your head this way physically move back up come this way chin like it's so simple but when you're shooting somebody who can take direction it becomes really easy to put them into the right headspace of photos um i did make a blog post on a life behind the camera so I am going to just because I did include something different that I don't have on I didn't have in the video. But if you guys are subscribers to a life behind the camera, I included a blog post yesterday and I shared these photographs and my favorites. So do um, this is the photo that my client I was hired earlier in the day to shoot portraits for a magazine, which four people came, I shot portraits for the magazine, that work is on embargo, so I can't share it with you. This was the reference photo that my client of my it's my photo, I shot this uh, probably two years ago. This is the photo that she referenced that she wanted me to imitate this light. So I shot that but then I also did a creative and I kept similar light that I did with him. So this is what I'm sharing you here in this blog post. But the thing that's unique about this blog post and the reason that I'm sharing is first of all, you get to see some of my favorites that I'm isolating. But I also include um, my setup what my lights are. I also include these lighting diagrams. So do subscribe to my blog because I'm going to start including things like this, which is the lighting diagram because you've seen my behind the scenes, you know what the set looks like. But for those who are just seeing my blog post, I've created these diagrams. Again, one of my favorites from the day and the diagram. Like I think that I let me know if you guys feel like these lighting diagrams are helpful. You saw what I shot and you guys know this is the lighting diagram exactly. So this one you can see here, I'm showing in the diagram that I move off axis and I'm shooting him from this angle. I can see the light in the background. So I'm really trying to like make my light, my lighting diagrams beneficial. Um, this picture, and again, this is again showing you this light exactly with the blocker. 
this shot, which is one of my favorites, and it's showing you that second light over the shoulder, this main light, the blocker, and the blue on the background. So I've created these diagrams. Please have a look at them. Please subscribe to my Life Behind the Camera blog where you get all of this content. And yeah, I think that's pretty much uh, it for today and talking specifically about lighting. I'm going to open it up to questions and just see if there's anything that you guys want to ask me now that you've seen um, that beautiful studio, by the way, that's uh, one of the newer spots that I've just recently started shooting in. Um, that could be the studio that I shoot in every time. And that could be the studio that I make all my videos in. And um, yeah, that studio you can drive a car into. It has big double garage doors that open and let natural light in. That studio and the owner of that studio um, are becoming friends. So I could be shooting there a lot more often. So definitely ask me anything that you might have or any questions that you might have regarding anything that you saw today. If you guys don't have any questions, I'm just going to roll us into photo reviews, but I am going to give you the opportunity to ask me lighting specific questions. Know that I did this particular, um, I did this particular topic today because earlier on in the year, I asked you guys, what do you need more help with? I put uh, an ask on the community page, like, what are you the best at? What are you the worst at? What do you need help with? What do you think that you're... And the thing that I heard the most is people need help with lighting. People need help with studio lighting and confidence in the studio. Um, one thing that I'm learning from teaching Julie and teaching Jason is that there is like an aha moment that happens in the studio for most photographers when they're lighting. There's like an aha moment and it doesn't happen until you actually put yourself in the studio with some lights and and try and practice. I would also suggest looking at some videos, looking at video content, taking a lighting workshop. There's lots of photographers that do lighting workshops and I'm going to start doing studio lighting workshops in the summer so you guys can sign up and be with me in the studio for a day and I can do these demonstrations that I just showed um, in this video with you. Julie was the one who got the one-on-one -on -one instruction during this video and I'm hoping that Julie's going to have an, or had enough time from Friday to today to submit some photos because the work that Julie did with Wyatt was amazing. Jay also brought a model. Jay brought a model after we shot Wyatt. Jay bought a model and Jay did a photo shoot. I basically had a studio for a whole day. And after I did my job, I did a creative. I let Julie do a creative and then I let Jay do a creative. So it was one of those things where um, I had the studio. I just wanted to facilitate my assistant shooting. So um, because you guys have no questions and do let, leave a comment guys in chat. We are live here. Let me know in chat if you found that helpful. If you found it helpful, amazing. That makes me happy. If you found it helpful, Alice has some new spaceman photos. Let's go. Alice says, hello, here is a set of spaceman photos for now. This was another not planned photo shoot. It started to snow, so I ran outside with my helmet and umbrella and got these photos. Basically, it's like the first time this spaceman has seen snow. All right, let's get into real photo reviews. Our first, Alice. This is Alice's first photo. This is fantastic, Alice. I love this. I love the punch of color. I love, love, love this, Alice. Let's go. The colors are everything. The way that you are using 
the umbrella to mold you and these like punches of color, but they also point your eye back into the mask. But also look at how the mask is exactly lined up with this red and exactly lined up with this purple. I don't know if you did this on purpose, Alice, but this is really next level. I'm very proud of you with this self-directed project. It is incredibly fantastic. This is so, so, so good, Alice. You should be very, 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 very happy. This is your first photo and it's an 11 out of 10 unequivocally, obviously. Look at it as a cover. It's just fantastic, Alice. You did so well on this. Let's look at another. This is Alice's first picture, guys. Well done, girl. Let's look at another. Alice's next picture. This is great, Alice. Again, great color, great color, great light. Look at it as a cover. It works as a cover. It's a great crop. Yes, you're a little bit tight down here in the bottom of the photo, like we do lose a little bit of the green, but that's like inconsequential. The more we go this way, the more that it pushes you that way. And we're already quite close to your hand here. The distance here is really good. Um, the head angle, you do look like you're falling backwards a little bit as far as your axis. You do look like you're leaning back that way a little bit, but again, it doesn't matter. The light is gorgeous. The snowflakes are gorgeous. The depth of field is gorgeous. The snow on your shoulders, everything. Again, Alice, your self-portraits are so great. You've won photo of the year for your self-portraits because you put so much effort into them. Very proud of you. This is a fantastic, fantastic photo. Another banger from Alice. That's two. She's two for two. Whoa. She's two for two. What am I doing here? All right. Two for two. All right. There we go. Okay, let's look at another last photo from Alice. This space helmet, is it heavy? You got to answer that for me. Is it heavy? It looks like this one is like your head is like a little top heavy. It looks like your chin is up too much. I wouldn't mind seeing your head. Um, I don't know what's happening there. Wouldn't mind seeing your head just down just a, a little bit. Oh my God, that's weird. I wouldn't mind seeing your head just down just a little bit. Let me just do that. Quit screen brush. Um, yeah, it seems like your head is just up just a bit, but everything else, the head space, um, your framing, the color, the molding, everything else, Alice, is like on point. I feel like um, the mask might be too far back. It might need to just come forward just a little bit. Um, if I had to pick a favorite, Alice, between your three, um, if I had to pick a favorite between your three, I think this one is it. This is, for me, my favorite photo just because of this alignment and how absolutely, like, bang on you got that this for me is uh your best photo so well done well done photos from alice guys. let's go photo from vicky sonic also known as alice and i'm not sure if there are more photos guys but if there are more photos do let me know do let me know because I, oh, we do have some photos in the submissions. Let's go. New photos from Sam. Let's go, Sam. Sam says, new landscapes. I'm still not 100% sure I'm finished my edits, but maybe. I love you, Sam. All right, my guy. Oh, my God, dude. I wish I lived in the mountains, but Sam makes it easy for me to see the mountains because he makes photographs for us like this. 
do let me know what camera format you're shooting this on. If this is four by five, if this is just regular digital, this is really incredibly detailed, Sam. I love the nuance. I love where you placed the cloud. I mean, where you placed the mountains. I love the fact that like the rate on that third, like your discipline for thirds is, is pretty crazy. Like if you look at that line there, and then look at your next third line there. Like you pretty nailed it. You pretty much nailed it. I love how there's just a hint of light up here on the top of these. This is a great photo. It's 100% an 11 out of 11. 11 out of 10. I love it. It's a great shot. Great, 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 great shot. Let's look at, there's four from Sam. So let's look at another, yeah? One. Two. We're going to go in this order. Oh, by the way, guys, what do you guys think about being able to batch upload on Discord now? You don't have to upload one at a time. You can upload five shots at once and it puts them into a nice gallery. I kind of like it. It's another photo from Sam. This is your new used camera, Fuji GFX digital medium format. Let's go. This is great. Thank you for the heads up, Sam. I appreciate that. This is really strong as well. I again, so sharp, so detailed, and it looks like these trees are like hair on these mountains. Like you've made the scale of these mountains, like they look so small, but they're so massive, which is really, really, really clean. I like this a lot. The focus is really disciplined. Like your, your focus line, like this edge is so sharp. All your trees down here are so sharp. Um, I really like it. And it's such a great visualization of the tree line, meaning there's an altitude like above. Uh, I'm not sure what it is. I think it's like 2000 meters. Um, the trees don't grow anymore. So you can see the tree line and it tells you exactly like this is 2000 meters or Sam, what's the tree line? Where does what how high is the tree line in Canada over there? I'm curious. This is another fantastic photo. Yeah, and it got another another beautiful uh, exhibition of the tree line. You can see the trees and where they end. The trees end in the same spot like on all the mountains. And anything that's higher, even in the background, there's no trees. And the tree line ends right there. It's pretty cool. So this is really great. And again, great discipline with your thirds. If you look at right there, that's a third, another third. This The pollution is actually a bit of a trip because you can see the pollution hanging down here. You know what I mean? Which is really kind of crazy. That kind of goes up that high. But again, it's almost like an environmental photograph too. You know, I really like this, Sam. So far, everything you're showing me are 11s. I haven't said so on every photo, but... You're just hitting it out of the park, honestly. Such a great set. Such a great set. And wow. Wow. The sun broke for him here. Such great, great light that's happening in here. And the detail. The detail, the fact that you, you have detail in the highlights here. You're not losing anything in the snow is really technically great. Like these are shots that you should be framing, Sam. This is my favorite out of all of them. I'm gonna hide my camera so you can get full effect. Like one, two, three, four. Like for me, this is everything. I would for sure put this in a frame on my wall. This is fantastic, fantastic Sam. Well done. Guys, you can see like the photographers that watch, they put it all out there and they really, um, my viewers, I'm really blessed because the right viewers seem to have found me, the right people who are looking to take their photography to the next level and people who actually just take the things that I, the advice that I give and take it to the next level. Like I've been 
I've been so blown away by the photography that's been submitted on this show over the last two years. It's humbling. Sam says that he hiked up in the dark to get to the top. And again, your level of commitment, you can see it's palpable. I really feel your level of commitment to making these photographs. And I, again, I'm waiting for a book. I'm waiting for a print to be sent my way. I'm waiting for um, you to really turn this into an exhibit. There's so many different angles where you can leverage these photographs, Sam, and I'm, I'm really proud of you for making them. And they just get better every time you do. So keep at it. Brother Les. I have a brother. His name's Les. He's my biggest inspiration. He's a fine art painter, uh, an artist. He's a photographer. He is uh, multi-talented, this guy. This is some new photographs from Brother Les. He went to the coast recently. This is dope. I'm guessing that you can't give me bigger files from this, Les. It seems like and also, is this with your your digital camera or with your phone? It looks like it's with your digital based on the crop. But also, it looks like it they might be JPEGs because of the quality. Make sure you have your camera set on RAW and shooting at the highest quality. As far as the contrast and the color, I really like. It looks also like the flash might have popped up. If the flash didn't pop up, you would have been able to get like a nice silhouette of these dead sunflowers, which I wouldn't have mind seeing. Let's look at another. Wow, this is with your phone because I can tell from the wide format, but I like this. It would have been better if the, the windshield was a little less dirty because you could see a little dirty windshield in here, but the road, the leading line, and all this is really nice. The mountains and how it leads you down here is really nice. Um, this road up here is kind of cool. Um, and it gives us a view of BC, which I really like and appreciate. Um, beautiful British Columbia. Yeah, this is a dope photo, Les. Again, it's like, I wish that the glass was a little cleaner, but again, or stop and take the photo. But you can't always do that, especially when you're on a highway. So I do get that. I do get that. Wow, Les. This is gorgeous. Really pretty. Really pretty. This is my favorite so far. The super hyper wide angle and the perspective, how you're molding yourself with the trees. Like this is really great. I really like how the trees are molding. I like how the water comes in as a V. Like that's really dope. This is um beautiful, bro. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. My favorite so far. My favorite so far. And the last shot, again, BC Mountains. So crazy. So crazy, and these aren't even the mountains because you can see the trees go all the way up to the top. This, this one is just kind of a little hill. <laughs> this is a little hill. But this is what it looks like when you're driving in Canada. This is Canada, baby. Les, well done. Thank you for sharing. Well done. If I had a favorite um, from your four, it's, de I mean, come on. It's definitely the second last one. If I had a favorite, it's definitely this. This is freaking gorgeous absolutely do let me know if you guys agree or disagree that's my favorite shot i think um my favorite from his bunch very happy last let's go um keep it at it keep at it keep at it keep at it are there other submissions julie do you have photos for me let's look to see if there's some btp submissions and the answer is yes julie has some photos um, Turtle says he was rained out again this week. Turtle, no worries, my guy. It's all good. Um, Julie says a few shots of Wyatt from the recent studio shoot. He shot with my R5, shot with a 50 and 100. There's advantages for being my assistant, Julie. Eh? Julie, is there advantages for being my assistant? First of all, you got to shoot with my R5. You got to use my lights and you got to use the studio. Um, let's look at Julie's first photo, yeah? So this is Julie's first photo of Wyatt. Julie, wow. Look at this photo. Are you guys seeing this light? And again, Julie lit this. I, I did next to nothing when it comes to this light. I helped her a little bit with the highlight in the background. Um, I helped her a little bit with this highlight because she was losing 
separation because this background is black and because she had no light behind him it was just looking like a floating head so i helped her with this light but the front light placement is all her this is really 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 on the button julie you should be very happy with this photo this is your first 11 of the day should be very happy should be very happy let's go travis glad you're here all right let's look at another again um i helped a little bit but not much um julie lit this photo um i helped her a little bit with the set as far as she wanted to have him sitting on one of these boxes i helped her style this to look a little bit cooler um it was her idea to use the v flats as a background she used v flats to make the black um i helped her with this light back here that's about it the light on his face is great his outfit is great um the turtleneck it's all great this is a great photo julie looking at it as a cover come on it's right on the button you should be very happy with this photo it's like it gets a yes for me it gets a yes for me julie okay again like what did you think of shooting with the r5 um what did you think of shooting with the r5 and this is the same um with a gel in the background with a blue light look at the light on his face really nice super strong super strong light on his face i love the rembrandt lighting that you got again you did this on your own it seems like are you learning um are you learning how to light in the studio julie because like i left you you did this shit on your own you lit him like this on your own and i watched you place this front light you placed this front light which with such confidence like i was emotional it made me very happy and then um i helped with a perfect white i did this setup right i helped you do a perfect white um look at this light on his face you wanted to do a richard avedon look right that was the idea julie wanted to do a richard avedon vibe so what we did was i can kind of draw you a quick diagram here this is the white wall let's make this um not fade so this is the white wall and then there's a light here a light here these are four feet off the background you mark the center this light hits here this light hits here and then your subject you inch your subject forward until there's no rear lights touching them so the subject is around here and then with julie we put a black blocker on either side in order to be negative fill so that black is going to give us this dark shadows here so that's kind of what we did in post i would clean up this to make it like perfect perfect white and also you do the same thing with the seamless so we don't see that below the floor but everything else, I mean, Julie, this is such a cool shot, such a cool idea. I just want to see what else you shot. Let's see it. This close up, Julie, is everything. This is everything. Like, look at this as a cover. Like, this is a unequivocally, like, you asked me to help you do like an Avedon picture. Am I right? Like an Avedon light. Do you think we did a good job of doing like an Avedon light with this guy? We have nice nuance of a highlight here, but really dark shadows in his face here. Really dark down here. Great exposure here. Perfect white on this side. Perfect white here. Julie, you did it. This is a banger, like an absolute, absolute banger. I think you learned a lot like really really strong i think you should be really happy with what this looks like um do you feel like you could do this again julie do you feel like you could do this again um that's my next question because i'm i'm so absolutely proud of how you handled yourself in the studio like each time you're in the studio you're better i still know that you're nervous but you did such a good job in this context um proud of you you know and again the more confidence that you get i'll just be able to leave you in the studio with my lights and know that you're going to be able to create great photographs you know you're impressing me girl 
keep at it. Jay, I'm very hopeful that Jay has some photographs that he shot. I don't know if he's going to be. Oh, Julie. Julie, this is your piece de resistance. Look at this photo, people. Like, let's go. Are you serious, Julie? What happened here? This is, I mean, I know exactly what happened here, but um, I, I, I helped you see this. I'm going to draw a quick diagram because I think it's important for people to understand how you did this light. This is incredible. Like, it, it really is uh, just one of those next level photographs, but I want to show you how it happens. Everything that I said before, it's the same setup. So if you imagine we have the white wall, we have our model, we have a light here, we have a light here, we have a black blocker here, a black blocker here. So this kickback is giving a highlight on him here. And this kickback is giving a highlight on him here. Now, what Julie was doing is she was shooting this way. And when you shoot that way, you get that photo, right? Now, the photo that we shot before. Now, I showed Julie what this light looks like when you move this way. So what she did was rather than shooting on this axis, I moved her this way and showed her his profile, right? So once she came this way and looked that way, she saw this light. So it's the same light that exists in this photo. It, she has a black blocker on either side, just offset. So if she moves, she now, he's now the black blocker is his background. And this side of his face, which is in shadow, once she moves this way and looks at him this direction, now it looks like that. <laughs> so I show Julie this. And now, Julie, do you think you could do this light again? And again, all right, chat, are you guys not blown away by Julie's progression in the last year? Like, since Julie's added um, a little bit of time in the studio, are you noticing how artificial light and Julie's photography just elevates it to another level? Now, again, I had to help Julie see this photo, but once she saw it, I just walked away. Like, look at the nuance of the light that's happening right here. Like, this light right here it's so it's so next level look at that let me hide this uh sorry let me hide this is what i'm trying to hide look at this the nuance and also this light that's coming here is reflecting off the white wall yes we got a little bit hot up here in the forehead exposure wise which we could take down a touch but Overall, Julie, I'm I'm just really quite impressed. I'm really quite impressed. Yes, there's a little bit of a narrow gap here and too much of a gap over here, but overall, um you're you're really, really growing, Julie, as a shooter. You should be very, very pleased with your progression. I know that you're very hard on yourself, but um you're growing uh so much, so much. Wow, I'm glad you got those in under the wire and you guys see Julie shooting a model that I shot and how absolutely different we shot them in the same studio with the same lights. So um, let's see if there's some more photos. I think that might be the end. I know Les submitted some more. Wow, great selective focus, Les. Really strong. This is with the 50 millimeter. I can tell this for sure. This is great really strong really strong the color balance you could make this a little bit less cold because you can see um this is white 
So you can see here, this is a little bit gray, but it's also blue. So because it's blue, it's like it has a cast. It's like a little cold. Um, you can make this neutral, which would even make this photo snap like even more. But you look at it as a cover, you can see how how strong it is as a cover. It's really on the button, bro. Really great. Really great. Let's look at another. I think there's a couple more from Les. This is really strong, Les. I like this a lot. I like this a lot. Of course, this is fantastic. Really great leading line. The leading line along this is gorgeous. I really like this. Like the perspective where you chose to shoot this from is really great. I think this is a great photo. You should be really happy with this one. And Les's last photo. I feel for me, the birch trees back here is the photo. Like this is the photo back here. I find this just a little bit bold and distracting. Um, but that's okay. I mean, still, out of these photos, it, it, it's almost like these two are a bit of a series. This one, I feel like it works a little bit more effective because this tree with the moss is more interesting than this tree is. And I feel like the trees behind is what I really want to see. But I appreciate it because it looks as though you're doing a self like a series and like I see it. So stay with it. Not every one of the shots is going to be a hit. But if you know you're looking for um, uh, like that kind of a like bold tree with like trees behind, like something like that, just stay with it. Stay in the pocket and um, you'll find it. You'll find it. Travis says um, they like the contrast of the horizontal with the light vertical branches. I definitely agree, Travis. That's dope. Um, guys, let's see if there's any more. I think we might be very much at the end. And we are. Guys, you know I do this podcast every Sunday at 2 p.m. The whole goal about Behind the Picture and the sister show, Ask a Photo Pro, is to help you guys get better at photography. It's all about you guys challenging yourself, putting yourselves outside of your comfort zone, and really trying to do something different. The way that I teach and the way that I critique, I judge everybody against themselves. When I was in photography school, I was critiqued against myself, meaning I would hand, I would shoot something that I would like mail it in. And because I was one of the better photographers in the class, my whatever photos were better than some people's best photos, you know? So those photos that I would mail in, I would get Fs for. And I would be so fucking mad. And I, I would say to my professor, like, this isn't an F. I see what the rest of the students are doing. This is at least a C. And he's like, yeah, but you're, you don't give a shit about this assignment. And it shows in your photography. You're mailing it in because you think you're a cool guy because you're shooting models. But I'm trying to teach you and you're not learning by mailing it in. So for you, Cardi, this is a fucking F. So do it again. Like that's how my professors treated me and they made me so much better in such a faster way. Like in 12 months of photography school, I went from like, I was okay to like where I really had my stride and I had direction and a style and focus. And that all came from my professors nudging me and challenging me and what's most important and i want you to hear this they called me on my shit they called me on my shit anytime i mailed it in anytime that i did an effort that was less than my best effort they saw it and they were like ah, you suck and that really made me realize like wow these guys they're not just i'm not just a classmate they're they're actually helping me directly they're helping me and my professors had a way of doing that with all of us funny enough of the whole class of 75 photographers 
only five of us ended up becoming professional, only five out of 75. So it shows you um, the cream does rise to the top and not everybody is supposed to be a photographer. Some people really think that they want to be, but the people who actually become photographers, they try harder than you. They're more obsessed. They're, they're actually obsessed about becoming a professional. The only way to be a professional at anything is you have to be fucking nuts about it. You like by any means necessary, you have to have that mindset. Nothing is going to stop you. Nothing is going to stop you. And no, most of the time when it comes to the obstacles that stop you as a photographer from progressing to the next level, most of the time, like 98.9% .9 of the time, it's you. You are the one who's stopping yourself from progressing by just not doing anything, by not acting. So <sighs> know that uh, I'm obsessed about photography. I'm 52. I've been doing this since I was 14 years old, professional since I was 20. Um, and I still love photography and I hope you guys get that feeling and my passion for teaching and trying to help you guys get better. There's enough photography for all of us. There's enough jobs. There's enough opportunities. There's enough clients for all of us. All you have to do is be your own person, your own photographer and have your own vision. If you haven't watched my video on create your own photo style. I highly suggest you watch that next. Your style and how you see with the camera is incredibly important. I will be back on Tuesday and Thursday for Ask a Photo Pro. If you guys are interested in more of this instruction, these videos live on on the internet after I go after I end this stream, I go back and I put in timestamps for everything that I'm talking about through this whole video. So you can go in and find the exact things that I'm talking about. So um, you don't have to watch through I just recently added chapter markers. I don't know, join the discord. If you guys want your photos reviewed, you got to join the discord. The discord is where all of this stuff happens resources and community we all need photo community travis is the newest member of the discord so make sure you go over there and give travis some love he needs it and um travis is about to be starting to submit some photographs travis has been shooting and teaching and i've lectured and done workshops for travis travis is a former school teacher high school teacher and photography teacher so happy that travis is now here with us and looking to get to the next level with his photography know that um know that uh, you're gonna get there travis and know that also how we progress here how this whole system works is by putting photographs on the table there's some incredible photographers that watch this show but i have to tell you if you looked at any one of them and the first photos that they submitted versus the photos that they're submitting now julie is a great example looking at julie's last photo and looking at her first photo it's not the same photographer it's the same core of creativity and the same core of desire to be a photographer but she's evolved so far that she's now making money with her camera so it's provable it's a thing jason senior warbucks he's another one who um Jason's been my assistant for four years and he's developed into such an amazing person and an, an amazing photographer. I'm trying to teach him how to be a little bit um, tougher, how to be a little bit firmer with his rates and command a little bit more money for his photography because he deserves it. Um, Jay has a tendency to just um, be nice. And you know, if people can't afford the rate, he just lowers it until they can. And like, I, I'm trying to help him be a little bit tougher, because he, he puts himself out for other people often. And um, I need Jay to start doing some things for himself. So guys, I hope you found today's uh, little education helpful. I hope you guys found this lighting vibe helpful. There's going to be more. 
there's going to be more. I also will turn what I showed you today probably into a 10 minute video. I'll work on that this week. I also interviewed Jamel Shabazz last week. Um, I wasn't able to bring Jamil's interview to you today because uh, it's two hours. I have hundreds of photos to insert. I have a little edit to do. So that video I'm hoping to bring you next week. And there's always, always, always content. My conversation with Shabazz um, is mind blowing and was mind blowing. And um, let me give you just a little bit of a preview of my chat with Shabazz right here. Do you believe possible for somebody to start I'm making a living with just creativity in 2023? I'm gonna be very honest with you. It's very challenging. You know, as you know, I started out in the 70s and I didn't really start to make uh, gain traction until 2020, uh, uh, 2001 at the age of 40, 41 years old. It took me a long time to navigate and figure this thing out now. Now I have a foundation. I've been retired from corrections for 20 years. I had a day job that gave me foundation, health benefits, you know, and a pension. I get a, I get a steady paycheck every month. So I'm able to survive and make this a living. For a lot of young people, you know, trying to navigate in that manner, they are faced with a lot of hardships. I have a lot of friends now. They watch me and didn't really understand uh, my backstory. They're struggling every day. They got to get out there every day and make in images. And it's a challenge for them because if they don't get those images, they're not going to eat. Do you believe so powerful, man? Somebody to so, so powerful. And um, our interview, the things that he told me, man, like I, I cannot wait to bring you this interview. It's by far, this could be the video that hits a million views. Like it's, I don't think, uh, I don't think Shabazz has ever been as candid and um and raw in an interview before as the interview with uh, that uh, in our conference conversation um he would he would tell me i'll give you one story the book a time before crack that he put out um that was his first book many of the people that he was photographing in that book it came out before the crack em epidemic the crack epidemic that hit new york and that was just killing everybody and he would have photographs of this beautiful girl when she was like 16 and she's in high school and she's with her older brother. And then people would see him like when his book came out and said, yeah, my sister, she died of a crack overdose. Like she died three years later. And that photo in your book is the only photo that we have of her before crack. So he named that book a time before crack because so many of the subjects in that book fell prey to the crack epidemic. So many of his photographs, people would come up to him and say, that person, they were murdered in a drive-by or that person, they're serving 20 years in jail now. And you have the last photograph of them while they were free. While he worked in the penitentiaries, he worked as a corrections officer and there was people who were serving double and triple life sentences that would never see outside. And he would go to these people who were in the hole and he would bring his photo albums and he would show, this is what Flatbush looks like. Oh, they just put this new building up there and there's this rapper right now and he's doing this and hip hop is starting. And he would show these, these prisoners the fashion and the lifestyle and the love that still existed in the world and remind them there's still love in the world. Even if you're in this negative place, he would show them that positivity every day through his photographs to help them get through. Like the things that Shabazz did with his camera for 20 years with zero recognition is unbelievable. And when I met him, he was, 42. I met him roughly like 15 years ago and he had zero commercial success. And we talked about how he could be. I also showed him photographers that were hired by advertising agencies to steal his style. Like they would have back a time before crack 
and they'd say, you see these photographs? I want you to shoot the campaign like this. And Shabazz was getting no recognition and no money. And through our conversations and our talks, I was the first one that ever showed him Photoshop. He had never seen a computer before. I was the first one that showed him a Mac and what you could do with digital photography. He had never seen that before. So we, and also because of Jamil Shabazz, I did my first book uh, because of Shabazz advising me and helping me and, and telling me I was ready to do a book. I did my first book because of Jamil Shabazz. We exhibited together like, he's an incredible influence. And um, this conversation that I'm trying to find what I can take out of is all about just that. So know that if you thought the Fiona Lark interview was one of those that just hit home and was so powerful, this interview with Jamil Shabazz, <gasps> wow. Um, yeah, so I'm working on that too. Guys, thank you so very much for watching. Thanks for the support. Um, make sure you join the Discord. Do please subscribe if you feel like it. I mean, you don't have to. There's no obligation. It is free. But um, subscribing definitely tells me that there's people out there that want to be notified when I put out new content. It's a great metric. I have hit a 1,000 subscribers. So from this point on, um, I just want watch time. I just want you guys to watch my videos. I put a lot of effort into my podcasts. I put a lot of effort into all my produced videos. And it's all about helping you guys get to the next level. Take some time. Watch my content. And know that you get better every time you look through that little window. So don't ever stop. Love you all. Thanks for watching, everybody.